Yes, good morning everyone and good morning especially to YB Nancy for making time morning, to be with us. Yes, good morning. So I understand yeah, that you, <laughs> and, uh, you had, you had a, a very exciting day yesterday uh, and uh, also hope oh, yeah? that you had a... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Excellent. You, you can tell the audience more about what you did uh, yesterday. It was very interesting to listen to. Um, you know, tourism is a, a very important part of Malaysia's economy. And, um, you know, the borders are finally reopening. Uh, just yesterday, you know, we had the announcement by the two prime ministers of Malaysia and Singapore uh, that the vaccinated travel lane between Singapore and KL will open up on the 29th of November. So this is a great time uh, to talk about tourism and the opening of the borders. And uh, we also know that you personally were in Singapore to help to make this happen. So we'd all like to thank you for all your efforts uh, and also to all your colleagues in the cabinet. So, uh, you know, uh, so I, at this stage, I'd like to hand over to you uh, for your presentation, uh, YB. Oh. Thank you very much, Rehman. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. And a very good morning, Rehman and everyone. Thank you for having me here today. For a start, I would like to share with our audience uh, an overview of Malaysia's tourism industry. Next, please. In addressing the revival of uh, Malaysia's tourism industry, we have to go back to pre-COVID times. In 2019, tourism accounted for one in every four jobs in Malaysia, or employment of 3.6 million people. Tourism had contributed 15.9% to the uh, national GDP uh, with 26.1 million inbound tourist arrivals and 86 billion ringgit Malaysia receipts. So meanwhile, domestic tourism contributed to 103 billion ringgit in receipts with 239.1 million visitors. It's so nice to mention all these figures, right, Raymond? <laughs> at, at that time, Malaysia had been working hard to, to regain the traveler's uh, market that was affected due to the series of unfortunate events that had hit us as well as the high competition uh, and international marketing strategies of those surrounding us. We had seen the overall improvement between 2016 to 2019. I know you're interested in these figures as well. Uh, where year-on-year -year tourist arrivals had increased. However, when COVID-19 happened, many things were cancelled, including our Visit Malaysia Year 2020, and with it, the blueprint to reclaim the market. Here we go. Okay, next. At that juncture, Motec's role had shifted to our capacity to provide support to the stakeholders. While control focused on vaccination rates and containment of the virus, with it, we pushed for several financial aids and incentives through Budget 2021 and economic stimulus packages, such as, I think you have heard of this, Permai, Permakasa, Permakasa Plus, uh, and Permuli. It was an intervention move for us to at least provide a safety net while tourism was on hold and gave us the ability to reset and change our outlook. Going forward, our focus is to continue improving government assistance programs for small, medium enterprises with better identification of the needs of the industry to ensure a more efficient and inclusive approach. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we imagine the future of tourism, two fundamental elements become vital for the restart of the hospitality and tourism sector. That is resilience and adaptability. These two elements are what makes us able to prepare for the move as a country to the endemic phase. We have been mentioning this all the time and to allow domestic tourism to flourish. It also becomes uh, important because we see there is a drastic change to travel experience and four key trends moving forward. First is demand evolution where travelers' preferences and behaviors have shifted toward the familiar, predictable, trusted, and low risks. There is greater importance placed on pre-trip planning and transparent access to information. Uh, travelers will also expect greater flexibility and more favorable terms for future bookings, such as flexible cancellations. And secondly, health and hygiene 
have become a vital criterion for choosing destinations and tourist activities where travellers prefer destinations with established infrastructure and high quality medical facilities and an easy to follow health safety protocol. And in addition, access to affordable coronavirus testing also becomes an important pull, pull factor. The next trend is innovation and digitalization, where COVID-19 is proving to be a catalyst in the tourism sector's quest for innovation and integration of new technologies such as biometric recognition, e-wallet, cashless payment, contactless transaction, touchless check-in and online promotions and marketing with virtual experience. Last but not least is sustainability. The lockdown period has indirectly spurred the restoration of the environment and allowed destinations to reorganize the tourism model to be more sustainable in all aspects, including the need for the workforce to be adaptable and the opportunity to promote lesser known destinations, which would not only broaden the spread of tourism's economic benefits beyond hotspots, but also address existing concerns associated with crowds. These key trends that I've mentioned could incentivize investments in the tourism sector in a post-pandemic period. Even more important now that our borders will be opening soon, starting with the Langkawi as the international pilot project. Next slide, please. Ladies and gentlemen, a country's tourism growth is only as good as the industry's ecosystem. Each stakeholder has a role to play and Motec's role in tourism has always been to facilitate the growth of the industry. The latest UNWTO barometer finds that 60% of words say the three in 2020 and a return to pandemic 2019 levels in 2024 or later. Thus, in regaining global competitiveness with the new mega trends, MOTEC developed the National Tourism Policy 2020 to 2030 with a focus on efforts to further increase revenue, secure smart international and national partnerships, empower local communities, and ensure the sustainability and resilience of the industry for future uncertainties. This policy will be carried out through the six strategic thrusts, which are number one is transforming the governance capacity of tourism sector, related agencies to create a synergistic dynamism and harness their tourism core skills, such as effective engagement with all stakeholders, including state governments or agencies. Secondly is creating special tourism investment zones with attractive incentives to drive the development of high value, creative and inventive tourism and cultural products and services. This will encourage public private partnerships and uh, increase private investment. Currently, MOTEC is working with the Malaysian Investment Development Authority or MAIDA to identify and develop the zones. Excuse me, I need to drink a bit first. Well, thank you. Uh, thirdly, is to embrace the whole spectrum of digitalization and provide the necessary tools for the tourism industry to be internationally connected, perform rigorous data analytics of tourism futures and shorten the supply chain. Fourth, is to enhance demand sophistication through targeted marketing, diversifying products and improving destination attractiveness to appeal to high value tourists. So they will stay longer, travel more widely and spend more. Fifth is to reinforce the role of tourism and culture as a catalyst for economic development in a sustainable responsible and inclusive manner. 
in order to ensure the continuity of national treasures for current and future generation, apart from generating income. And finally, <laughs> to upskill and uh, to upskill the human capital, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to ensure, <coughs> excuse me, the tourism workforce, excuse me, are future ready uh, uh, to, to ensure the um, tourism workforce are future ready, able to deliver quality service at all level and increase the expertise and specialty within the field of tourism, as well as improve cooperation with the like, next, <coughs> excuse me, this is the after diving um, effect, uh, Raymond. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, in short, the way forward in tourism will focus on sustainability and increasing tourism revenue, which are important indicators in influencing a country's economy where it prioritizes quality over quantity. The commitment to sustainable and responsible tourism would strengthen the role of tourism as a catalyst for environmental protection and the preservation and conservation of our culture and heritage, as well as ensure that remote communities and products are also uplifted. These features are also able to make Malaysia the world's preferred ecotourism destination in line with the with Motex aspirations and Malaysia's commitment to the 2030 agenda and the 17 sustainable development goals. In conclusion, <clears throat> inclusivity and cooperation is the way forward to bring about growth in tourism. The government, states and private sector must come together to attract investments and chart the way to growth the uh, to the growth of the tourism industry only by doing so this would be ensured uh, this would uh, ensure that uh, no one gets left behind so i think um, for the overview perhaps that could that that suffices for um, for us to share with the um, the audience uh, Raymond. thank you very much <clears throat> yeah, thank you, YB. Thank you for your sharing. And thank you. Uh, you know, I was uh, interested to hear about the national tourism policy, which uh, I did not hear of before. Uh, you right. mentioned something interesting in that tourism policy, which you intend to work with uh, state governments and maybe private sector players to set up special tourism investment zones. What does that yeah. actually mean? Uh, well, what actually, can yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. This is something new. Thank you for asking that question because uh, uh, this is one way for us to uh, create a new um, a new uh, zone for every state. Um, you know, we want we want the government and the private sector to work together. You see, we are not the business um, the business people. We will not. We may not understand what the investors would like to have so what we have suggested to the um the state government we have talked to all the states okay uh, to introduce the the new um national tourism policy 2020 to 2013. we want at least all the states to think of the best uh because land is land falls under the state uh Raymond. since land falls under the state therefore it is just um good for them to work with the investors and investors are the people who can see the potentials of business so there are a lot of potentials in our country i've been going around especially in, even in the rural areas because i think they are able to see the potentials on how they want to build up new areas and also to create new uh, like uh, niche segments that i mentioned earlier you know so because um most of the um investors when they go to the state government um they the state governments um a lot of well most of them they might have been uh, hindered by their own restrictions the state policies like land and all the other policies that they are trying to to um trying to uh, protect in the states but 
time actually it's no longer business as usual so it's time for the investors to go to the state government and say we can see the potential of this area okay i'm being biased and let me talk about um the the kuching site that is uh, near santubong for example the pantai damai yeah there's a lot of potentials there so they can create new resorts and then also uh, some of the criteria that would that would be considered under um, new investment zone is that it's not just about the resort for example they need other facilities as well maybe um, for example banking sectors all the commercial sectors there and also retirement homes is part of them and um, hospitals apart from the um, maybe theme parks you know it is going to be a big thing but maybe different states would look at different criteria it's not the same all the time it all depends on how the investors uh, put forward their ideas and let the investors uh, share with us and what does the government need to do because some people when we talk to the state government uh, and industry players when we introduce the dasar pelancongan negara um what what people want to know is what's in there for them so in our case we have financial assistance to tourism infrastructure providers for more for example we with the governmental uh, the government government has set up the tourism infrastructure scheme under mm -hmm. bank pembangunan and the special tourism fund under smb bank to build and maintain their tourism facilities in 2020 and 2021 so um, the allocation for tourism infrastructure scheme for example under the bank pembangunan alone is about 1 billion and a total of 542.27 million has been approved and allocated to the eligible applicants and 178.55 million has been disbursed but anyway having uh, talk about the the new national uh, tourism policy you people will be interested in what is um, available there and investors need to know all this and perhaps as a government i mean i'm in the government but as a government we need to think of how we can assist them of course the investors want to know uh, they want to know okay um, what would be best for them corporate tax incentives maybe and the policies that are friendly to them so we need to think of all these so that they will be encouraged to uh, create the investment zone for the for the the various states so that's my take for now uh, raymond okay, i can talk about a lot of things <laughs> right right well yeah. talk about uh the diving uh event that you uh attended yesterday and uh how can uh you know we as uh, individuals also experience what you experience well we are opening it up for um, people to to know what we have been doing okay um, this is um, this is under heritage conservation uh, what we had been doing uh, it's under the ASEAN um, <clears throat> the ASEAN uh, uh, we call it ASEAN let me try to recall okay or meal okay and ASEAN under uh, underwater uh, uh, mini land uh, landmark okay what we did was okay we had about 11 monuments there and it includes 10 monument monuments from the various countries in uh, ASEAN so uh, there's another one extra that is to symbolize all the 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 the, the 10 ASEAN countries so we we um we placed the monuments underwater that was in pulau bidong and people asked us why pulau bidong because pulau bidong is the pulau where we had this um we have this mou with the university malaysia Trangano. so uh when we did that you know this is one way for us to conserve our heritage uh this uh apart from just having our other products uh, on the mainland i think that had been uh, quite common already and this is something new and how would this be able to uh, pull or entice um, people like yourself um, like myself i have to learn how to dive okay in order to make sure that i go underneath there i went to hold our lcc there you know um, this is to attract new uh, niche interests we have divers and we have uh, people who come from the ASEAN countries. And another way is to also uh, to attract investors to build infrastructure like this. 
pull people to discover new places. So this is something that is very, very, uh, of course, it is a restricted resources um, in many states, okay? But uh, this is another new product that will also help to generate new income. New okay. income because, you know, mm -hmm. the government always use excuse as limited uh, resources, limited funding. But we want the investors to come in. Uh, I would okay, like so you to go to Pulau so, and see this so for just, yourself. Just to make clear, Pulau Bidong is a diving site already. But uh, in addition to the natural beauty, uh, you have also planted <coughs> uh, monuments uh, relating to each country. 10 mon 11 monuments in total, uh, one yeah. for each of the ASEAN countries and one representing the whole right. of ASEAN. Uh, so divers in Pulau Bidong can actually enjoy the, scene, the natural scenery as well as those monuments which you planted there. That's right. That's right. Okay, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. But that's of course, great. you know, there are new, there are new um, interested or you call niche um, niche interest in um, uh, tourism, like photographers. They want to go under that underneath to start mm. uh, videographing or to take pictures. You know, mm. so this is another new interest that we want to uh, entice new people to come in. So okay. uh, we hope that. With this, uh, with this promo, there'll be more people doing diving, snorkeling, and also going to places where we have already planted the um, yeah. the monuments. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Congratulations yeah. on your newfound diving skill. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm happy because uh, we managed to get it done. And personally, I have um, I have held the KLCC towers there. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about something uh, 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 bigger about the reopening of Malaysia's borders. So, uh, as right. we mentioned just now, the Singapore KL VTL is going to start on the 29th of November. Um, but That's right. other Malaysians from other parts, you know, especially from your part of the world, Kuching, uh, KK, you know, yeah. Penang, not yeah. quite able to travel to Singapore yet. When is that going yeah. to happen? And uh, do you have any indication of when the land border on the causeway and the Tuas second link will reopen for travellers? Well, actually, uh, Sarawak just contacted me last night when they heard of the announcement by uh, Singapore and Malaysia. Well, uh, when, okay. uh, of course, Malaysia is starting. Yeah, they want to know how they can go about with it. Malaysia is just uh, kick-starting uh, international tourism for vaccinated uh, travellers beginning with the island of Langkawi as a pilot mm. destination under a travel bubble initiative in the fourth phase of the national recovery plan. Well, Raymond, I want to make sure that I must make sure I keep mentioning Langkawi first because this is our uh, pilot project, so we cannot leave it out. The PM, uh, our PM, uh, Yang Muhammad Datuk Sri Ismail uh, Sabri, announced on the 22nd, October 2020, uh, 20, 20, uh, recently Langkawi Island will be open for vaccinated inbound tourists beginning on 15th of November. So um, tourists, if they want to come to Malaysia, international tourists, they just go to Langkawi first. Uh, this is our initial uh, plan. But suddenly Singapore, working with Malaysia on vaccinated travel land, lane with Singapore, that starts uh, on the 29th November. But uh, you know, the, uh, the, the condition that they have placed was, okay, after they stayed in Singapore, the tourists stayed in Singapore for 14 days, then only they can go to Malaysia. But we don't want Malaysia to lose out, uh, Raymond. I mean, as a Malaysian minister, I want to make sure that we also want um, Malaysia to gain something out of it. So, okay, they can stay in Singapore for 14 days and then they can go to not just uh, Johor, but they can also go to Langkawi. And um, upon arrival in Langkawi, for international tourists, uh, regardless of where they come from, they must go for under another swab test for the fifth day. But when they stay in Langkawi for uh, the seventh day, after that, they can go to any part of Malaysia, Kuching or wherever, Sabah or uh, other parts of the country. They can go to uh, Genting, you know, because Genting had been asking me, you know. So um, this is effective 29 November. Uh, which we did not expect earlier on that it would be that soon for, for the other places. But what we want is um, uh, we want to make sure that Langkawi, Malaysia also gain from this. But having said that, Raymond, it took a lot of negotiations and also coordination. 
not just with other uh, ministries but uh, also with the other with the national security council or the nsc yeah. the nsc comprises of three levels okay the technical level the technical level is where we just put up our proposal from the ministry on the sops and secondly is the quartet level uh, the quartet is where they have already um, um, reduced, you know, or whatever, maybe the SOPs, they have come up together and say, okay, we only go for Langkawi. So that's the decision by Quartet, which they have to bring it to another level. Uh, that is the National Security Council meeting chaired by the Prime Minister. Um, he he chaired this and like uh, what they have announced on the, on the uh, VTL. So now with the VTL in mind, we are tuning the Langkawi SOP to complement the relaxation of international travel via the VTL. So, as COVID-19 situation has improved, sorry? Yeah. Okay, can, and, I, uh, so can I elaborate a uh, bit yeah. more? Sure, sure. Yeah, okay. please uh, continue. COVID-19 situation has improved. We are looking forward, uh, Ramana, to strengthening other ASEAN countries' cooperation. Besides that, we will also be collaborating with green neighboring countries such as ASEAN countries like uh, Cambodia, the countries that have come here, uh, country, Cambodia, Brunei, Thailand and Vietnam to promote products and tourist destinations. Despite all these initiatives, the COVID-19 SOPs are still applicable and should be strictly adhered to. Yeah, mm. okay, over to you. Yeah. So, so one question about the Langkawi VTL, uh, from which countries can these, will you allow travelers to enter Langkawi? Uh, is there a list, is that for the whole world or just a, a selected list of countries first? Well, um, there are countries that uh, we have to avoid in terms of high-risk countries, uh, though I have not been able to uh, list it down yet because we only got the approval or the information last night. So uh, we will, of course, um, share this with the public later. That will come under our SOPs, I mean, our our uh, news later. But as, as it is now, we have to uh, make sure, we have to confirm the, the list of the countries which fall under the high-risk countries. They did not mention the, num the names of the countries yet to us because we just asked for the information last night because we want to make sure that we are not leaving anyone behind. But of course, we have to be realistic and also be practical about uh, the countries that we are going to open. This, again, we have to refer back to the Ministry of Health and also the uh, immigration authorities. They will be the ones uh, guiding us through the uh, national security. Or maybe I have, oh, well, I, oh, okay, we are very, very efficient here. <laughs> I just got this, uh, this uh, listing of the countries, okay? Um, okay? In Europe, we have Russian Federation, uh, Ukraine, Romania, Serbia, Georgia. Uh, these are uh, high risk countries, huh? uh, and also. Okay. Uh, Slovakia, Bosnia, and uh, Herzegovina. And for US, we have uh, Suriname, uh, Martinique, Guyana, St. Kitts, and Nevis. So far, we only have those in the list for the That's time. That's a very short I think list. A very short list. Uh, yeah, at the moment, I think it's based on the, the cases as well and how they handle their cases. So for now, we only have this. Uh, as I so, said, I just yeah. got it. Um, so, so, um, that maybe, so that maybe sounds maybe. like so that sounds like the vast majority it sounds of countries like every country can come to Malaysia, right? Yeah, except those small number of countries, right? So that yeah. sounds very good. Yeah. So. Yes. Uh, but anyway, uh, Raymond, this may not be uh, exhausted fully yet. Uh, we might be okay. receiving more later because, as I said, we only got information about the the situation last night, but the the list of the countries are only known <clears throat> now. Uh, so except uh, for all these 11 countries. So we will be okay. updating the uh, the nation as soon as it's been finalized. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Thank you. You know, YB, the, the Langkawi, you know, sandbox program, as you mentioned just now, that's starting on the 5th of November. That's something that mm -hmm. Thailand did Phuket, you know, back in the middle of the year. And now they've moved forward. They've opened basically the whole country uh, to a large number of countries which they consider low risk, including Malaysia, and without quarantine, mm -hmm. entering Thailand without quarantine. When are we actually going to move towards that? You know, right now, arrivals into Malaysia still have to be quarantined for 14 days. 
except for arrivals into Langkawi, where they can roam the island for seven days before traveling to other parts of Malaysia. You know, Thailand has moved forward. How, how fast do you think Malaysia can move towards where Thailand is right now? <clears throat> okay, excuse me. I mean, um, as uh, you already knew it for Langkawi, there is no quarantine. And then um, even for um, those uh, like the VTL, there's also, I hope I'm right, huh? uh, no quarantine. Uh, there's also yeah. no quarantine, no quarantine. Um, yeah. and then uh, with, if let's say they come to Langkawi and then after that they want to go and explore other other states uh, in the country uh, we I believe that will be the uh, SOP but anyway we have a special committee to uh, monitor the development of Langkawi so we will mm. see to that uh, at the moment, as you see, Langkawi is still no quarantine because the whole island is already uh, a quarantine island. Um, yeah. <laughs> I believe Malaysia, yeah, that's why, you see, um, since we are going towards uh, uh, pan, uh, endemic phase, since we are right. going towards that, we hope mm. that, you know, because now I have to say this because um, I've not been traveling overseas. Uh, mm. I also don't want to be quarantined. But we have to make sure that our SOPs, like, you know, maybe 72 hours before they come in, they have to be, um, they have to, they have to undergo the swab test, you know. So <clears throat> rest assured, uh, our approach is once again, uh, we want to open and we wish to open, remain to open. We don't want to, after we open and then we close again. So that's why we have to be very, very uh, cautious. So um, this is okay. the, just taking a helicopter view, lah, Raymond, eh? So, um, okay. as I said, from oh, no quarantine as well. And then uh, from Langkawi. So, they can go to Langkawi first and then go elsewhere. Is this okay. one way to also help economy in Malaysia and Langkawi? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, Malaysia is going to take the approach that Singapore is taking by opening gradually to an increasing number of countries and, and not right. the sort of big bang mm -hmm. reopening mm -hmm. like the US is doing, you know, from November 8th, you know, basically vaccinated travelers from around the world can go into the US without quarantine. So Malaysia is more taking the, the cautious step-by-step -step approach rather yeah, than the correct. US approach. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I right. think that, that is um, good for Malaysia as well. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. very cautious and just to make sure that when we open, it's open until, um, until you know, until, uh, you know, we are not going to close anyway. So there is no yeah. closing. Yeah. Open, once for all, we open without closing yeah All right so Thank so you. i think the yeah the other thing is uh, that the arrivals uh, into malaysia in terms of tourist arrivals uh the <coughs> largest ones come from within asean so we have made the made the step of opening up the vtl with singapore and how about thailand and indonesia these are also two big markets for malaysia in terms of uh tourism uh, well um Sorry, uh, Thailand and Thailand and Indonesia. Indonesia. Yeah, how yeah, are the okay, discussions um, going? I I just want to um, inform you that today the Prime Minister is going to Indonesia, so this will right. be one of the topics. Okay, and then uh, for Thailand, uh, we have not um, really re um, discussed with them um, on the details. But as I said, you know, actually, our strategy first is domestic, second is ASEAN countries. So ASEAN mm -hmm. countries that will include uh, Thailand, and then of course Singapore is already done, and then uh, Brunei, Thailand, and the other neighboring countries. That will be our next uh, move. And Indonesia is um, well, PM is going there today, and then uh, and the rest of the countries. Uh, so we even mm -hmm. talking about uh, international already. So uh, our ASEAN countries is part of our international uh, tourism um, plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, in, in terms of the COVID pandemic, I, I'm sure that uh, a number of hotels or um, tra tourist locations have, uh, you know, suffered uh, bankruptcy or closure, things like that. I mean, have you uh, received, uh, you know, requests from these uh, private sector companies to, you know, give additional assistance? And is the government willing to uh, go beyond what has been announced in the budget, uh, you know, to, to help these companies? Well, uh, thank you for that question. Actually, Motec has planned a variety of uh, strategies. 
to boost domestic tourism, including the implementation of even incentive redemption programs. I believe uh, earlier on, uh, Tengku Zafrul have spoken, so I'm sure uh, he has touched on um, how they're going to assist the tourism industry. Anyway, uh, we we have some incentive redemption programs like uh, discounts, we have rebates, we have vouchers offered by the local airlines, the Malaysian uh, Association of Hotels, and also the purchase of cultural uh, products. As of October 2021, Malaysians had redeemed nearly 40% of these incentives with the full opening of tourism and interstate activity across the country. Uh, this figure is expected to increase steadily. But going back to your question uh, with regard to helping the hotel, some of them um, face bankruptcy. But anyway, that has to be verified, you know, because uh, some of them, they have to do it for for some business strategy. I'm not, I'm not uh, denying that. But I think mm. uh, I have to verify that whether it is to close down totally or whether it is to reset or to, to restart. Uh, so... Um, uh, in the tourism uh, industry, uh, I think in the budget, we are also uh, given some kind of um, uh, funds to to help fund to reset and also to restart the SMEs and the SMEs that have hotels and also other businesses. But anyway, a swift recovery of the tourism industry relies on strong fiscal support. So we are also pleased that the government has allocated 1.6 billion bring it under the budget for 2022. This will enable the ministry to continue playing its role as one core ministry to contribute to the country's uh, economic recovery post COVID-19 pandemic. Well, uh, Raymond, actually, um, I, I hope uh, well, the people will also understand that we do not have the funds. We do not hold the money. We have to request from the Ministry of Finance. And we are so lucky that the Minister of Finance is very supportive because he understands the the um, the the context of uh, you know, the tourism uh, industry being in this uh, situation, and then you know they're willing to support us. So our approach is to get more parties involved and uh, commit to more sustainable and competitive strategies to revitalize this industry. So I think uh, some of them I, we have been mentioning this all the time. Like we have the Panjana tourism financing about six hundred million for specific financing for tourism sector, and then we also have the wage subsidy program, you know, matching grants uh, for repair of budget uh, hotels, fifty million in matching grants to companies to organize arts and culture related programs, and sixty mm. million uh, in terms of incentive funds for the purpose of promotional activities, including domestic tourism, and many more, many more, because we want to have a higher class in terms of uh, better standards of facilities or infrastructure for the new uh, tourists to come in. When I say new is after this COVID-19, uh, under our 2020 to 2013 uh, tourism, uh, this, you know, our new tourism policy, we want more mm. high yield tourists to come. So we right. have all the assistance from the government to assist our industry players yeah thank okay. you raymond that's, for that yeah that's great so we you have about 12 minutes mm -hmm. uh, to go uh and i'd like to go back into history to talk a bit about the trend for tourist arrivals into malaysia so i looked at the statistics yeah. tourism malaysia and if we take out singapore arrivals and just look at arrivals from everywhere else uh, between 2014 and 2019, which is that five-year period prior to COVID, Malaysia grew its arrivals by 1.8%, 18%. But Thailand, for instance, grew by 60%. Indonesia, Vietnam uh, by 70 to 100%. Philippines by 70%. You know, so we seem to have underperformed you know uh, our competitors our neighboring countries in terms of tourism growth now why has that been the case and what can we do differently going forward to make sure that we don't fall behind our neighbors in terms of tourism well thank you i, I also have to go back to history uh raymond uh i think if i go back to history we are talking about the branding for malaysia during that time Despite the branding Malaysia Truly Asia that has been famous within the ASEAN countries and also uh, worldwide, 
it has been apparent that amongst the ASEAN countries, Malaysia is underperforming compared to Thailand and Indonesia and currently taken over also by Vietnam and Philippines. We are aware of that. So Malaysia's tourism growth has lagged behind its ASEAN neighbours due to um, various reasons. For example, number one is a series of negative events that have concurrently happened, uh, which kept tourists away during the period of year. Uh, if you remember, events such as the loss of two Malaysia Airlines planes and subsequent restructuring of the flag carrier and a return of a lung burning haze caused, caused by wildfires in Indonesia during that time. As I said, we are going back to history. And secondly, besides uh, the stiff competition with greater advertising and promotion budget, particularly for Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam and Thailand, have made these countries more visible, attractive and interesting for travellers. And of course, uh, the Malaysia Airlines rationalisation programme also resulted into reduced direct flights into Malaysia. This has made um, travelling into Malaysia more expensive and unattractive due to many transit hours. The hassle of changing flights or even flight times that are not suitable for connecting flights, especially with European flights. I like to highlight all these you know, because um, this is going back to history. Anyway, destinations such as um, Phuket, Thailand and Bali, Indonesia are destinations that have very sentimental value and have long bonding lies to its, um, ties to its um, travellers. For example, a couple married in Bali will then have its honeymoon in Bali and uh, will repeat every other honeymoon in Bali. This is just one example, Ramona. Uh, even growing older, they will come back with their grandchildren just to walk down that memory lane again. Hence, Bali becomes a repeat destination for them. Um, other than Thailand, since uh, the based arrivals are lower in these countries than Malaysia, uh, small differences will show higher growth and Malaysia is always receiving higher tourist arrivals in ASEAN. Albeit the decreased arrivals from Singapore, the arrivals from medium and long haul such as from East Asia shown positive growth. But that's history. <clears throat> we do have our strategies, Raymond. Uh, how do we go forward? Uh, Tourism Malaysia, our backbone agency, has come up with new strategies to regain the market and attract. This is promotion now for Malaysia, Raymond. Uh, anyway, mm. this is to attract, uh, to regain the market and attract international tourists to come back to Malaysia once borders reopen. So other countries are competitive as well. Among others, for example, we have um, this. This is to boost segmented tourism. I think I talked about. Uh, uh, creating niche segments or special interest holiday packages. Example, family fun, eco adventures, islands and beaches. This is one of the best ways to enhance demand sophistication for travel while focusing on experience, experiential tourism. Focus mm. should be given to the unique experience of homestay and agro-tourism such as durian packages, uh, which not many other countries have gastronomy promotion through food trail and uh, just for information uh kuching city yesterday just uh won the unesco uh gastronism uh, gastronomy uh, uh creative network city so uh, this is another promotion so um uh other incentives like uh, vouchers uh, discounts to meet individual travelers requirements for small group packages. So what better way to entice consumers to spend uh, than providing vouchers and discounts on holiday packages. So focus should be more on digital vouchers rather than traditional by working closely with established online uh, number, uh, platforms and uh, also those belong to industry players. So this strategy is in line with the national tourism policy, which emphasizes on digitalization. In addition, Incentives can also be provided through product owners, transportation providers and hotels. And another thing is also to forge smart partnerships. 
two core elements in smart partnership that must be integrated for our uh, one is to harness public private sector partnerships and intergovernmental agencies i mentioned to you about the uh, national tourism uh, the, in, the the in the investment zone so we want to re tourism products and co-organize tourism programs and events both physical and online through public private mm -hmm. partnerships this is very important in order to have to, this is a one way to go forward and secondly is also to enhance collaboration uh, between government and uh, non-government agencies such as Malaysia Healthcare Travel Council. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, some countries, they come to Malaysia for medical and also education, Malaysia Global Services, a lot of. Now we have more universities for people to come and, uh, you know, send the children over to to learn and to study here to further this, uh, their, their education. Um, next is also to strengthen cooperation with tourism industry players. The support of our industry players is very crucial for the growth of the tourism sector. And uh, fourth, mm -hmm. Tourism Malaysia is also focusing on strategic collaborations and smart partnerships with airline companies to increase connectivity, such as Qatar Airways have been talking to them, Emirates and others that will bring tourist traffic to Malaysia uh, through their flights. So um, uh, next is also the Islamic Tourism Centre. Uh, which have partnered with many international organizations, such as the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, where we are the lead coordinator for the development of the standards for Halal Spa under the Standards and Metrology Institute for the Islamic Countries, or we call it SMIIC, an organ of OIC. Um, again, we also want to leverage on new consumer behaviors. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there are new trends to observe post-pandemic. However, one market that is important to tap is the, generous, uh, the, the Gen Z and millennial travelers that is set to be the largest share of global population by 2040, uh, numbering 2.6 billion people. So we have um, you know, done our survey on this. These are the risk averse group age and consider travel experiences a priority with a focus on authenticity and sustainability. Well, aside mm -hmm. from that, there have been emerging growth in travel tech innovations between 2010 to 2020, around $455 billion have been invested in travel and mobility tech starts up. We have seen a surge in solutions focused on search and uh, booking platforms and now this has evolved to transportation healthcare and food and beverage all at one's fingertips there is a huge potential for this and while Motec and tourism malaysia can work towards facilitation the industry too must be ready to adapt if you allow me again i can talk about online and offline enhanced tourism promotion uh, i have time a bit there huh? Uh, just uh, well anyway tourism malaysia will develop online and offline marketing strategy uh via right. virtual um, or webinars i'm sure you're interested in this yeah, virtual virtual. Is yeah exactly and social media where users followers and product owners share special interest packages and experiences in live streaming actions by optimizing e-marketing Content and uh, stories on destinations in Malaysia can be increased and frequent updates on health, safety and hygiene of destinations in Malaysia can be provided. So apart from that, the content structure uh, can be streamlined and aligned with the ongoing advertising and digital campaigns as well as social media platforms and uh, online travel media in the market. Well, Tourism Malaysia's digital presence and reach would be diversified by creating mobile apps. Many people are, have been asking me this. We have virtual events, booking features and videos and photo contests to strengthen the destination branding across all digital platforms. Do we have an and app already? Yeah. Do we have Sorry? A, do we have yeah, we're building it. And then it's, it's, uh, we're building and also in the process because we are creating, you see, um, after the COVID-19 stuff, we have, to, we have to give priority of our funds to other uses for, for example, putting food on people's table. So now we are rebuilding all this uh, to encourage more of the um, promotion and uh, advertising to be done through online through apps. Uh, apps are 
in the process as well. But of course, they are also already in existence, but not as much as what we would like to see. Um, the aggressiveness of the apps to to uh, to entice people to come. There, there are more. Uh, we are talking about um, in terms of the contents. Okay. So besides online promotions, um, Raymond, offline promotions such as roadshows television and radio advertising, publications, and actually, like myself, wherever I go. This morning at 7.30, I was requested to be, to have breakfast with uh, somebody at the, to, at their cafe, and just do a small promotion. You see, our followers, there are quite uh, plenty of them. So this is one way, myself as a minister, I do my own promotion to help out. So uh, traditional marketing segments targets the older age groups. And um, well, um, we also want to optimize strategic communication, like media engagement. More engagement is also needed uh, with the media and the key influencers. We will be um, uh, identifying more, 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 more of engagements to be done. Uh, we have to be aggressive in all this because of the uh, because of the newly reopening of the tourism. Actually, uh, Raymond, I have plenty to share with you, but I do not want to take away time that that is supposed to be for others but if you know if i can talk as much as possible because i am very excited to talk to a different kind of a, a different audience segments of audience for them to know what we are doing actually we have more yeah. to, to offer but i know you are uh, you know you are eager to tell me okay please talk no, no, no. I, I wanted you I to continue but unfortunately ibrahim sunny is going to ask me to stop <laughs> It's okay. okay. Uh, I would like to thank Ibrahim as well and everyone. Uh, if yeah. you want more information, we can share in the future. All right. Thank yeah, you very thank much. Thank you so much, Mike, you. for your time. You. I think you're well, thank you, you, you you as much as you can in uh, Motec, you know, to help facilitate travel. But, uh, you know, right. everything uh, also has to depend on what your colleagues in the cabinet and the MKN decide. Uh, so yeah. we hope that uh, the country as a whole will move forward, especially on reopening the borders because that is really the key especially to china yeah. hopefully that some That's arrangement right. can be worked out That's right. yeah. uh, so that we can bring in the chinese tourists again so yeah 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 i think that's very important because there's such a large spender and there's such a large group of people who that's are true. willing to travel mm. that's true yeah well okay i thank everyone thank um i would like to thank yeah. best malaysia we can talk again in other sessions all right yes we can thank we can you. yeah all the thank best so and uh, yes yeah always comply with the sops <laughs> enjoy the rest of your time in chungano and keep well, the you memory too, of yes, thank fresh <laughs> all right thank you very much yeah thank you very much so I'll hand over yeah. the session back to ibrahim sunny thank you yb take care thank you man yeah